Hello, welcome to another video. This is Onkono Garage. This is my new Toyota Yaris. It's on a 2012 plate. Um, this is the SR model. So the SR model entails, um, I believe, you get front fog lights. These nice 16 inch alloy wheels, which are in grey. And a little bootless spoiler, which looks quite nice. And also the reversing camera and parking sensors. So looking around the car, you've got these styling cues, which I quite like, the lines which run up the doors, the sort of recessed door handles, which um, side repeaters in the door mirrors. Again, this is a fairly modern car. I suppose on modern cars, it's fairly normal to seal this sort of thing, but I'm not used to that. Because I'm used to my old cars, which I've got over here. Sorry about the traffic noise, I'm running out to a road. <laughs> So yeah, overall I'd say it's a pretty decent looking little car. Only one front wiper. Again, I, I actually quite like it because it covers the screen really well. So yeah, we'll head inside. So inside the Yaris, it's quite a nice place to be. You've got your instrument panel straight ahead, rev counter, fuel gauge, speed in the middle, obviously. Um, I believe this is another SR thing, having a rev counter because of the base models they don't have an actual, um, they don't have a rev counter there, and they also don't have an actual fuel needle. They have the fuel um, gauge in here, and these two on the outside, there's two spaces just blank, and you have a speedo in the middle, which is very basic. Uh, also got the Toyota Touch and Go Entertainment System, um, which is pretty nice, actually. Um, the maps are quite accurate. Um, they do cost like 120 quid to update, though, so I don't know whether I'll bother with that. I'll probably just keep using my phone as Sanav. But um, when it does work on the roads, it does now. It's, it, you get three map choices. You get the fast one, the econ uh, economy one, and the most sort of direct one. And uh, yeah, so you've got your um, climate controls down here. Now it's all manual, which I prefer again, simpler. And you can tell with this car, you can hear in the back of the dash, when you turn these gauges, they you can hear that they're at, well, not so much that, but you can hear they're doing something directly in behind. There's no there's no um, servo controls, which is which I find a lot more well, it's a lot more reliable. I think a lot less complicated. Um, the air conditioning, I'm pleased to report, is very good on this car. Really nice and cold. Um, half leather seats. I'll show you the back in a minute. Uh, door cards have got a bottle air holder in them. You've got your cup holders in the middle, and uh, yeah, that's on both sides. Front electric windows. Uh, this is the model with just a normal key. Otherwise, you'd have your start stop button there if you have a really posh model. But again, I'm not really that keen on that. And I believe those also come with digital climate control. You've got your volume controls, um, radio controls, and all that lot in changing modes and answer and hang up. Uh, so we'll have a quick look at the uh, infotainment system. So you've got your average miles per gallon sort of trip information uh, section which is pretty good um you can select your past records it's saying the best so far is 41.6 but that's with me driving fairly heavily shall we say um it will do about 50 to the gallon if it's driven sensibly i've had that before um yeah sorry if i'm a bit snivelly hay fever season at the moment unfortunately so this is sort of access by pressing car um, set up gives you all your information that you can uh, uh, set up, you know, change the settings on, on here and it has a vehicle section but as far as I can tell on this car um, you can't actually change any vehicle settings um, you can change your audio settings so you can turn all that on and off or you just keep it as it is um, general sort of Settings. Yeah, you can change you can change quite a lot of stuff on here, but um, usually as it is, it, it comes pretty decent. I mean, I've not had to change any settings. This is a Bluetooth setup for your phone and everything. Uh, yeah, you can change the display settings. You can turn the screen off for some reason. 
So yeah, it's not too bad. It's quite a good little system, I think. You can turn the map on here. And that works pretty well. But yeah, um, media as well. Audio's off. Keep that turned right down. Probably come on anyway, I suppose. So you get your phone signal and your battery percentage. And you get all your different sort of, you get your two different radio settings, your CD, Bluetooth. I think that's it. Oh, and you've got auxiliary and USB as well, but they're blanked out because nothing's plugged into them. There you go. But yeah, I mean, for what it is, I mean, it's a Toyota, so it's it's a fairly basic car, but you're, you're getting reliability. Everyone knows that, you know, these, these things are built to sort of get you to from A to B as sort of reliably as possible right so uh let's have a quick look in the back shall we so as you can see in the back there's actually plenty of room um for a small car i'm pretty impressed the seat's set for me i'm five foot what am i five foot eleven so i'm five foot ten and um i'm sat in the back sort of my knees are touching the seat but it's not uncomfortable i'd be all right like this but yeah not too bad and you can really see the half leather interior back here as well. It's quite nice. I don't think it's real leather though. It's definitely uh, sort of vinyl, but uh, it's not too bad. So drivability wise, uh, being a 1.3, it's not quite what I'm used to. So I'm used to a two litre diesel Passat, which is not really a comparable car, I know. So it's taken me a little bit of getting used to uh, in that respect. Now, uh, the gear stick, looking at it, I thought, well, that's, that's quite long, probably going to be quite in, sort of imprecise and difficult. But actually, the gear change action on this car is absolutely lovely. It's so precise, so sort of, it's hard to, it's not notchy, but it is so positive. You know, you know when you're going into a gear and it just feels really nice and tight. And you've got like a forward and left and forward reverse with a little nubby lift up. But unfortunately, it has worn off the top. This seems to be fairly common with these. I think they, these just unscrew, the and you can replace this little top sort of cap fairly easily. Um, I'll start it up a minute, um, so you can see. Turn these lights on, you can see there's also a shift indicator. It tells you when to, when to shift up and down for economy and things like that. Um, but yeah, I do tend to just ignore that really. <laughs> Um, it tends to tell you to shift up too early, then it struggles and tells you to shift down again, and then tells you to shift up again. So it's not the best system. So start it up, and uh, we'll have a quick look under the bonnet, I suppose. The bonnet releases down here. Oh, and that was my back on the chair, that wasn't a fart. Oop, just kick the door for good measure. Just find the bonnet open, release thing. And there you go, just ticking over quite happily. Lovely, quiet a little ending. Yeah, it's got a really nice little, nice little engine note to it, really. And the exhaust sound. Again, it's all fairly pleasant. <laughs> We've got a funny little header tank, like all the Japanese cars I've had seem to have that. It's quite a strange little thing. But if you look down there, you can see a, um, a little yellow drain pump for the radiator, which again, not enough cars have that. But with my Passat, you have to pull off the middle hose on the radiator. And that leaves the bottom half of the radiator full of coolant. And it's the same with the Astra. You pull the, the sort of middle-ish hose off, the lower hose, it's half of the radiator. You, you drain most of your coolant out, but leave a load of it in. And that's especially annoying when you're flushing. The 205 also has a little tap on it. But this one, that, it just seems to be a design feature that most car companies ignore these days. Unfortunately. 
but yeah, I mean, it is what it is for a small car, but it's under the surface there are quite a lot of really good little features. I suppose while I've got the engine running, it'd be rude not to do a little wiper test, wouldn't it? So, as you can see, the um, the washer fluid jet is in the middle of the blade, and it's hard to sort of explain, but it it's difficult to get the fluid to the top of the screen sometimes, but it does get there. But for a single wiper, the performance, I'd say, is very strong. Um, yeah, uh, you can tell sort of my... <laughs> I watch Hubnut videos, that's how you can tell I sort of, not quite a wiper pair of it like Hubnut is, but, you know, it is a very important thing to me now. Well, only really since watching his videos anyway. The most important thing being no triangle of doom. So I just thought while I was at it, I'd show this rather unusual rear seatbelt setup. So to use your middle rear seatbelt, you need to get these out of up here. This one pulls down to almost like a mini uh, belt buckle down here. You click that one in. Oh, it's hard doing this one handed. So that clicks in there, and then you um, basically use it as a three point seat belt like normal. Uh, this one just plugs in oh, down there to give you a three point harness. Well, harness seat belt. Oh, I'll just actually make sure that plugs in a minute. Ah, maybe I have to go in this one. Yes. So there you go, there's your sort of hideaway middle seat belt in the back, which I think is quite a cool little design idea. But to release it again, you need to have the uh, ignition key, push it into that little white slot there, and that releases this sort of the mini buckle there, which allows it to retract all the way up, and then you can stow it away up there. I would demonstrate it, but the keys are in the ignition all the way over there. <laughs> so boot space wise, I think we're looking pretty good in here. Uh, perfect space for storing a torque wrench, amazingly. But uh, underneath the boot carpet, I've got a space saver spare wheel and all the equipment to change it, which is fairly surprising. Um, seems to be something that's omitted from a lot of modern cars these days. I should replace the torque wrench back in its original position. Um, and funnily enough, they have the same sort of thing here. I, think, I believe you can do something with the parcel shelf here. For these look notches here. You can put the parcel shelf. I'm not actually sure. Or is it something that levels the load levels the load space uh, when you have the back seats folded down? Because they do fold, but I don't think the back I don't think the base folds forwards. I'm not sure this is something I'm gonna have to investigate. So that sort of concludes this video anyway. If there's anything else you'd like to see let me know in the comments below. Um, definitely subscribe uh, the thing is this is the first video I've done in a while so my confidence isn't quite there again um, so definitely let me know what you thought of the video and your comment in the comments um, don't forget to like as well that helps boost me a bit uh, I think it's still something like 99% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed so it definitely does help my channel um, I'd like to grow a bit more so um, that would definitely help so uh, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. So inside the Yaris, it's a pretty nice place to be. You've got your, uh, oops, shit.